Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently saw this advertised online and I also saw it mentioned in a forum where posters were discussing whether this was a clone or not. Now it was confirmed by Eric, the designer of the Tiny SA Ultra, that this SA5 Spectrum Analyzer has nothing to do with him. However, is it an actual clone? Does it have the exact same board inside as the Tiny SA Ultra? And does it work just as well? Well, in this video, we'll perform a couple of tests, have a look around the UI, and then take a peek inside to see what's under the hood. Now, this is being sold at around the same price as a Tiny SA Ultra. In fact, it may be just a few dollars cheaper. Now, in the box, we get a couple of styluses, a rather cheap plastic one, and then a bit more of a quality one, which does actually work quite well. We also get a little SMA adapter, primarily used to connect the two SMA patch cables together, or whatever you want, really. We then get two short SMA patch cables, which can be used for calibration or connecting to devices under test. We also get four stick-on rubber feet. I guess these can stick underneath so it grips to your desk if you're going to be using it on a flat surface. A USB-C cable is also provided, and this is used to either connect the SA5 to a computer or to a charger for charging that internal battery. We then get a very short telescopic antenna. Now I guess you can connect this to the RF port and then use it for receiving radio signals. We also get a micro SD card, which is actually quite useful as you can use this to store calibration data or even store screenshots. We then get the user's manual, which actually I'm quite surprised about as it's quite a good quality manual. It's printed in color, and covers pretty much all of the features and functions of the SA5 Spectrum Analyzer. So if you've not used one before, it does cover each screen step by step. Now, as said at the start of the video, this SA5 is rumored to be a clone of the popular Tiny SA Ultra Spectrum Analyzer. And as you can see here, with them sat next to each other, the SA5 is clearly larger than the Tiny SA Ultra. Now the screen sizes do look around the same size, but the SA5 has that clear push switch rotary control on the front panel. And that's something that the Tiny SA Ultra doesn't have. Instead, the Tiny SA Ultra has like a little thumb wheel on the top. Now looking around the SA5, we find a physical power on and off switch on the top. And then on the left side, we find two SMA sockets. One's labeled as CAL for calibration, and the other is RF. And the maximum input is plus 6 dBm, and any more than this, can then you risk damaging the SA5. So I would always recommend to keep it way lower. Now on the underside, there's a USB-C socket for charging and computer connection. Then there's a micro SD card slot, and then there's a 3.5 millimeter audio socket, which according to the manual can output demodulated audio from AM transmissions. Now on the back, it's just a serial number sticker, which incidentally does give credit to the Tiny SA designer. That's Eric from the Netherlands. Now on the front, to the right of the screen, we find a rotary encoder, which is also a push button. This does actually feel like a nice, smooth quality encoder. Now how long it will stand the test of time is anybody's guess, but it does feel quite nice to turn. Now before powering it on, I'll insert the micro SD card the one that came with the kit, into the micro SD card slot on the bottom of the SA5. Now this is not needed for it to work, but I may as well insert it just in case I want to store any data in the future. And of course, so I don't lose it. Now before we do some test measurements with the SA5, I just wanted to compare what it says on the version window on both the SA5 and the Tiny SA Ultra, just to see if there's anything that points to the SA5 using different firmware. Now, hopefully you can see this and on the top we have the SA5 and on the bottom we have the Tiny SA Ultra. Now, while these version screens look the same, there are a couple of differences. Firstly, the name of the device on the top line. Now, I presume this is hard coded in firmware, so the SA5 clearly does have different firmware. Build date and times are also different, but the version numbers are the same, 1.4-156. The compiler version used on the SA5 also appears to be a newer version. Now, one of the major hardware differences between the Tiny SA Ultra 
and the SA5 is the fully rotating encoder. So I presume that the SA5 firmware has also had some modifications to support that hardware change. Now let me know in the comments if you see any other changes listed here that are worth noting. Okay, so let's do some testing with the SA5. And one of the first things we should do is perform a calibration procedure. Now this is very simple and just requires one of those SMA patch cables connected between the Cal SMA port and the RF port. Now it only takes a few minutes or two, but once complete, it shows you on the screen that the calibration is complete and we're now ready to do some testing. Now as this video is more about the SA5 rather than how a spectrum analyzer works, going through the menu, it is actually identical to the tiny SA Ultra. So there's no need to go through everything. Now there is one setting which I found different in the UI, and that's when it comes to enabling the Ultra mode. Now on the SA5, when you tap the Enable Ultra button, Ultra mode is enabled instantly. Whereas on the tiny SA Ultra, when you press that Ultra button, you get a little pop-up that shows a URL, which then takes you to a website and provides you with a special code that you need to enter to enable Ultra mode. Now, a popular test that we perform with spectrum analyzers is checking for spurious emissions from transmitters, especially the harmonic power levels. So let's take a berthing radio, which I know has a rather high and out of spec second harmonic on the two meter handband. And using an attenuator in line, we'll just drop that power from the handheld radio to a level which is lower than plus six dBm, so that we do not damage the input on the SA5. So here we can clearly see that the second harmonic is way higher than it should be, and I would suspect this radio would not pass any FCC emission tests. Now in the past, many viewers have had varying opinions on testing radios like this, and whether or not these second harmonic values would actually cause a problem in the real world. Now personally, I think they would. However, let's try a radio from a top tier manufacturer. Let's take the Yaesu FT3D. So transmitting on the same frequency with a similar power input, still going through the attenuators to the SA5. Well, check this out. Literally all of the harmonics are way below the fundamental, not even reading some of them. Now this is how a handheld radio should look when measuring for spurious emissions. I performed the same test using the Tiny SA Ultra, using both the same radios, same frequency and same power, and the results are exactly the same. So the SA5 is definitely comparable to the Tiny SA Ultra. So in the advertising blurb for the SA5, it says that you can connect the SA5 to a PC and use software. Now it would make sense that the SA5 technically uses a modified Tiny SA Ultra firmware. So the software that works with the Tiny SA Ultra should work. Well, it doesn't. Well, it does, but not all of it. Now using the software like I would with the Tiny SA, no data is shown on the screen. And here I should be seeing what the screen would show, but well, it just doesn't. So something there is not compatible. However, within the same software, there is a feature where you can remotely view the Spectrum Analyzer's screen. And this does actually work. In fact, I use this feature on most of the videos where I need to show a Spectrum Analyzer. Now maybe there will be a dedicated PC application for the SA5 to come out soon, but so far, I've not even been successful in finding the manufacturer's website, let alone any firmware updates or software. So lastly, let's find out if the board inside the SA5 is the same as the tiny SA Ultra. Now taking four screws out, we can open the case and reveal the board, which actually is silk screened as an SA5. It's also the full size of the case, so it's definitely not the same board as in a tiny SA Ultra as the whole board on the SA5 is larger than the whole of the Tiny SA Ultra. So no need to take the Tiny SA apart. Now there also appears to be a sizable battery installed, most likely a larger capacity than what's in the Tiny SA Ultra, but without removing the battery, which is actually glued to the lower case, I can't really tell. Anyhow guys, let me know what you think of this, and if you have any further information on this product that I've not covered in this video, then please let us know down in the comments below. Anyway, until the next video, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.